Welcome to Mr. Gard's Maths class. Today we're going to be talking about substitution and equivalence. We know from previous years that we can substitute pronumerals for numbers. In other words, pronumerals represent an unknown number. Sometimes we are given that unknown. So I have an example on the right hand side where A is equal to 2 and B is equal to 4. Now we'll come back to that one in a little moment. But if we have two expressions that are they are equivalent if they're always equal. So if two expressions are equivalent, it means that they are equal, no matter what number is being substituted. It is also important to remind yourself of the commutative law and the associative law, and there are examples down, be down below. Generally speaking, when we are using addition or multiplication, it doesn't matter which way around we put the numbers. So an example is 2 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 2, and 4 times 5 is the same as 5 times 4. That will be important for later on. In the example in green, we have 7a plus 3b is equal to 9a plus 2b minus 2a plus b. We know that these two are the same. We can check that by substituting in to our unknown or substituting in unknown numbers. So if a was 2 and b was 4, we would get something like this. As you can see, I've substituted in a equals 2 and b equals 4 into these two expressions, which now make an equation. So if I was to solve each component here, we would have 14 plus 12 is equal to 18 plus 8 minus 4. That should be plus 4. Sorry, plus 4. If I then take that to the next step, we get 26 is equal to 18 plus 8 is 26, minus 4, 22, plus 4, 26. And as you can see, our equation or our expressions are equivalent. We use substitution a lot to solve problems. And here in the red writing, I have a question. It says, in Australian rules football, you get six points for a goal and one point for a behind. Show an equation for the total points scored. So, we can say goals represent G. So you get six points for every goal. So it's six multiplied by G plus one multiplied by, let's say, we'll call that B for behinds. That will equal the total. And that is a way of showing an equation for the number of goals and behinds scored in order to get you a total score for your team. Those that are familiar with AFL will recognise this and that equations are formulated no matter how many goals or how many behinds are scored, you will always know what the total AFL team score is. If a team scores 13 goals and 9 behinds, what was the team's total score? So all we need to do is substitute the number of goals scored, which in this case was 13. So instead of a G, we're going to write a 13. So we're going to go 6 multiplied by 13 plus 1 multiplied by 9 for the 9 behinds. Commonly when we are doing algebra, we don't often write 1b, we can simply write b, because a b by itself represents that there is just 1. 
Now 6 multiplied by 13 is 78. And 1 multiplied by 9 is 9. And so our total AFL score in this case is 87. Now it doesn't matter how many goals or behinds are scored. As long as you substitute in the right number, you will get the correct answer. That's all for today's lesson.